In the previous video, I defined eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Now I want to calculate them. How do I do this? Well, let me go back to the definition. A vector v is an eigenvector of the matrix A if A acting on v produces a multiple of v, lambda times v. I can choose to try and find v or lambda first, and it turns out to be easier to find lambda first and then v. So my first goal is trying to figure out what lambda, what multiplicative factors, work for some particular matrix. To that end, let me put the identity matrix on the left. Lambda v is the same thing as identity lambda v, since the identity doesn't do anything. However, I can pull the constants out, constant out by linearity. The right side, multiplying everything in v by lambda, is the same thing as the matrix lambda identity acting on v. Lambda identity is just the matrix with lambda all the way down the diagonals and zeros elsewhere. It just multiplies each component by lambda. Well, but then I can subtract. And now again I can use linearity. Subtraction before or after is the same. And the result of all this strange movement is that the matrix A minus lambda identity sends V to zero. This is an equivalent definition. V is an eigenvalue of A if lam A minus lambda identity sends V to zero. Being sent to zero means that V is in the kernel of the matrix A minus lambda identity. If there is a vector in this kernel, and remember that the eigenvector v is always a non-zero vector, then using the properties of invertible matrices, the kernel is at least one-dimensional. That means that the matrix is not invertible, and that means that the matrix has determinant zero. Therefore, I can boil all of this down to a determinant equation. The determinant of a minus lambda identity must be zero for lambda to be a valid eigenvector sorry, eigenvalue. And this is going to be my technique. Calculate this determinant and solve it for lambda to find the possible eigenvalues. So let me present this as an algorithm. I write down the matrix A minus lambda identity. I calculate its determinant. I set that determinant equal to zero. This determinant will always be a polynomial in lambda, so it is called the characteristic polynomial. I try to find the roots of that polynomial. These roots, lambda, will be the eigenvalues. I can then index them, lambda i. Since any polynomial only has finally many roots, there will be only finally many eigenvalues. Then, if I have an eigenvalue lambda, I can find the corresponding eigenvectors by going back to the kernel. I said on the previous slide that the eigenvectors were precisely the kernel. So I just calculate that kernel and that kernel will provide the eigenvectors. That's the algorithm. In particular, note how this algorithm makes use of various constructions in the course. I need matrices as transformations. I need the properties of invertible matrices. I need kernels. I need determinants. Many pieces of the course are coming together to make this algorithm work. Before getting on to examples of the calculation in the next video, I want to end with a bit more discussion about the subtleties of this algorithm, starting with multiplicity. This may be a review, but let me go through it nonetheless. If a number alpha is the root of a polynomial, this is equivalent to x minus alpha being a factor of the polynomial. Since it is a factor, I can write the polynomial as p of x equals x minus alpha times q of x for some other polynomial q. It's a factor, so I can factor it out. However, it might still be a factor of q of x. It's possible, maybe I could factor it out again. But there is a maximum to this. After factoring it out some number of times, it will be finally gone. So, the largest number n, such that x minus alpha is a factor of the polynomial, is called the multiplicity of the root alpha. To find an eigenvalue, I ended up with a polynomial, the characteristic polynomial, and its roots were the eigenvalues. However, these roots may have multiplicities. So what does that say about the eigenvalues? Well, for each eigenvalue lambda, there are a bunch of eigenvectors, and if I include zero, these eigenvectors form a linear subspace, a line or a plane, or something similar, all of eigenvectors. 
Since it's a linear subspace, it is called the eigenspace of the eigenvalue. Each lambda has its own eigenspace, all the vectors for which it is the eigenvalue, all vectors which are scaled by that number lambda under the matrix action. A natural question is, what is the dimension of each eigenspace? For each eigenvalue, each number lambda, how many vectors are scaled by this number? Well, this is where the multiplicity comes in. The multiplicity of lambda as a root of the characteristic polynomial is the maximum dimension of the eigenspace. These multiplicities give an idea of how many eigenvectors are possible. And finally, I need one last definition before I finish this video. This may seem a bit random, but it will, will be useful in the examples. A matrix is symmetric if it is the same as its transpose. Recall the transpose is the mirror over the diagonal, or equivalently, it is the matrix where the rows and columns are switched. These two matrices are symmetric. You can see the diagonal symmetry. The 1, negative 3, and 0 are matched here, and in the larger matrix, 4, negative 2, negative 9, 3, 3, negative 1 are all matched across the diagonal. And you can also see that the rows and the columns are exactly the same lists of numbers, and that's what a symmetric matrix is.